So we've seen gPCR signaling across a variety of different cell types, and so I wanted to kind of sum it up and maybe more appropriately compare some of the gPCR signaling we've seen. Okay, so here goes, we've got our abbreviated pathway. And our heterotrimeric G protein. I'm going to do some color coding to attempt to follow this. Whoops, beta's down here, then gamma. And so when activated in skeletal muscle cells, we follow G alpha which activated adenylyl cyclase and eventually activated PKA, which eventually um, led to glycogen breakdown. And so I'm leaving out some of the other steps that you've seen before and that you should know just as a way to compare these. We also looked at G alpha in neurons and how when it activated again adenylyl cyclase it led to PKA activation but in that case went to the nucleus and triggered transcription. In another um, situation specifically in the heart pacemaker cells We followed activated G beta gamma. Doesn't matter which order you write those in. Which directly activated calcium channels. And calcium rushed out. Finally, we also examined the G beta gamma in some other muscle cells. Your book was a little vague about this, uh, but basically we, we looked at um, how G beta gamma activated PLC, phospholipase C, which produced the products of DAG and IP3. IP3 led to calcium efflux uh, from the ER and then calcium ions, as well as DAG, activated PKC, which went on to trigger other targets. Again, for the exam, I want you to know the abbreviated pathways, which are uh, longer than what I've gotten what got written down here uh, for each of these scenarios. This one's not very long. Uh, this one is, lo is quite long. Um, and this is basically a way to kind of get you thinking about how the signaling can be used in different ways and just kind of to put those together in one slide. And overall, as kind of a take-home point, we see that GPCR signaling can be used in a variety of different cell types. And sometimes we can track things through looking at one of the activated components of the heterotrimer, and other times we look at the other heterotrimer. And you can see that there's a variety of different ways that just one receptor um, can, and its one G protein, though it is a trimer, um, can cause a variety of different effects. And basically through seeing these different things, you see there are some things in common, for example, PKA across these two signaling pathways, adenylyl cyclase as well. Uh, we see that sometimes we stick to cytoplasmic events such as the glycogen breakdown. Sometimes channel proteins get involved like we see here. And sometimes we um, also can use molecules such as phospholipids as, as reactants for signaling molecules. Again, my intention is not to overwhelm you with um, a huge figure, but instead to possibly help you see what some of the themes are and just to be able to kind of categorize those. I think it really does help to have these examples in mind and just kind of stick on the path for what um, a particular set of events is. So I think I'll just write down a couple of those take-home messages. So one receptor can be used in a variety of cell types. Um, with different 
outcomes. We can see how this heterotrimer G protein can lead to a variety of events. We can see that there are shared components like PKA and adenylyl cyclase. I'm just going to write some more down at the bottom here. Uh, sometimes ion channels are involved. Sometimes phospholipids are uh, the reactant to produce secondary messengers. And really our discussion of that um, is about the products, DAG and IP3, more so than the, than the phospholipid, but just as a reminder that phospholipid was in inositol phospholipid, and that was the reactant that was broken down into DAG and IP3 by the enzyme PLC. We can also see that cell signaling can really affect a variety of locations across the cell. Uh, so sometimes we go to organelles, for example, with the calcium here, we went to the ER. Um, sometimes we go to the nucleus for transcription. Other times we stick around in uh, the cytoplasm. And sometimes we hang out at the membrane too. So for example, PLC uh, hangs out at the membrane, as does DAG um, and PKC. So overall, that is um, my attempt to kind of bring together these different pathways and give you some overall ideas about how cell signaling occurs. Again, most of our attention is directed at these very detailed cell signaling pathways, but keeping some of this in mind might help you to see why we're talking about it, as well as maybe tie into uh, some of the unique parts that are happening across these different um, takes on the cell signaling.